Robert, Don, and Dave, and Vidon, right? Correct. Hey, wait. Great. How many languages do you speak, Don? Oh, not many. I, mean, <laughs> I, I get along in French and German, but it's pretty rough now. <laughs> okay, well, that's a, that's a good collection for winemaking, at least, right? A good, a Dan good, also good speaks a bit of German, so... Just, just the, the, barest, the barest minimum. Vidon is French, you know. I, I didn't. Okay, that makes sense. The French no, name. Patrice Vidot well, owns a law firm yeah. in France. Carl, check okay. The and he has a chateau sure built in 1680, and we spent six days with him a few years How's ago. How's it look? He invited us. Nice. <laughs> nice. Was he part of the inspiration right. for the project? Or? No. No, yeah, yeah. okay. It's mm -hmm. a good connection. It's a French pronunciation, yeah. but it's because Vicky's married to Don. Uh, so. <laughs> but uh, I've had emails okay. twice in French asking yeah, was, if we are related. Yeah, was looking at the press sheet and was trying to place that. So it, it is sense. a French name. Yeah. Cool. Well, we just, portmanteau word, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, we just got our introduction with some real content instead of the normal talk. That's good stuff. It's going to stay in the show. Uh, but but welcome to the Wine is Serious Business, episode 348. I'm Dan. I'm Chaz. We're here today with yep. Dave and Don of Vidon Vineyards uh, out in the Willamette Valley. Pretty new winery. When was when was your first uh, first public vintage? The 2003 released in 2005. Fantastic. They've been working with our, our friend Carl Giovanti, who brought us all together. We're here today at, at Riva on the Park in the South Waterfront. This nice uh, condo complex. We've got uh, we've got this lovely uh, lo lovely room here with the, the eco the e what, eco e terrace the eco terrace room. <laughs> Love the space that they they let us use to do this show. So thank you so much. It's a great spot. Um, we've got four wines here today. All grown with the state fruit, which I didn't know until moments ago, which I think is pretty remarkable. Every single wine you make, right, is with the state fruit. Uh, we're going to start with your own introduction, so just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what you're trying to do with the with, uh, winery. Okay, well, I grew up on a farm. I'm still really a farmer at heart. And uh, after the military, uh, while in Berkeley studying engineering, I went to Napa and was fortunate to have many of the old guys like Robert and Peter Mandavi pour for me regularly. That's when I got interested in wine in the late 50s. <laughs> That's so cool. Uh, then I did postgrad in France and discovered Burgundy, and so uh, I, I consumed a lot of wine for many years. Uh, I ended up in, um, in uh, Silicon Forest, I guess, Beaverton in 96. A uh, venture capitalist got me to come up and be CEO of a startup company in the semiconductor business. And I biked on the weekends. I had much more time then. And uh, we biked a lot down in the area around Newburgh and McMinnville. And I really fell in love with the land and decided in 1999 to buy some land and start farming. Cool. So we did that. And uh, I started renting dozers and track hoes, which are fun. <laughs> clearing the land and planted the first five acres in 2000 and 2001. That's what we have. The, that's the fruit for these wines we'll taste from the old old blocks. That's fantastic. fantastic yeah. And and uh, and you do have a tasting room around the valley too, right? Oh, yes. Right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 Or where is five it? miles northwest of uh, Newburgh. North five miles northwest of Newburgh. On the okay. Chehalem, oh, yeah, yeah, Chehalem yeah. Mountains at five hundred feet. Yeah. Chehalem Mountains. Yeah. yeah. So if you're yeah. out in that, if yeah. you're out in that neighborhood, definitely, uh, definitely stop by and, and check it out. Uh, Dave, how about how about you? What what brought you to the project and what brought you to wine? Well, uh, so I started in the wine business thirty years ago. I was a beverage director at a at a restaurant in New York City, uh, run by Joe Baum, um, and left New York. Um, ended up in Tucson, Arizona, and decided to go back to school to, um, with thoughts of becoming a winemaker, ended up with a, got a degree in biochemistry and through a series of misadventures, um, ended up uh, with a PhD in molecular biology instead um, and became a, an academic. I was the accidental academic. Um, sure. Ended up with my own laboratory doing yeast biology um, in Wellington, New Zealand. And when the New Zealand government gave up on basic research in 2010, I said, I'm going to go back and do what I was going to do 25 years ago. So we repatriated to Oregon, moved to the Willamette Valley, and I started at the bottom, you know, bottling and vineyard sampling and cellar rat, and then pouring in a tasting room. Yeah, pouring in a tasting <laughs> room. Uh, used my old uh, my old New York knowledge and uh, worked my way up through assistant winemaker, and then you know got together with Dawn, and we've been kind of making wine for off and on for three or four years now. Um, yeah. And I too cut. My, I mean, my restaurant had a two-star Michelin chef, and so I cut my teeth on Burgundy 30 years ago, and I've been, nice. have been <laughs> kind of, you know, following that ever since. So that's why we picked Oregon, uh, the obvious Pinot and Chardonnay connection. So, 
Cool. And I, I, as you can imagine, yeah, awesome. I think either one of these guys should give you a 45-minute show all by themselves. <laughs> should we get true. the chance to run into them, have a conversation? There's a lot of great things to say, and we're going to talk some more. But let's, uh, let's talk about wine number one first. What, what, uh, what do we have in the glass right now? 2016 Chardonnay bottled two weeks ago. Uh, the fruit, the clones are 76 and uh, 95, Dijon clones. Okay. On RG rootstock, since you have knowledgeable people listening, they'll know yeah. what that means. Uh, re early ripening. Uh, very light oak. Mm. Some flex tanks. We can talk more about flex tanks. <laughs> okay. I don't think there's much oak in this. Uh, no, this one's nicely integrated, yeah. Yeah. 16, yeah, I don't get uh, much on the nose. I would yeah. be surprised if there was much oak in Yeah, how, mu how much neutral, I mean, I mean, how much new oak do you think percentage-wise would be in this? Well, the, and Very the, small, right? And the new oak is, is a punch-on, too, so the surface okay. area to volume yeah. ratio is... Yeah, the is, direction is, we're going is using uh, punch-ons, large volumes, uh, lower surface to volume, makes introduces the oak components more gently. Yeah, I, my experience with that from other wineries has been been really good. I I, I think that that does work well with Chardonnay and Oregon. Yeah. Well, we think yeah. the 16 is going to be superb, though. The reserve, the Apollo 16. Okay, it's excellent. Just yeah. straight out of a new punch on. Fa oh, fantastic! Yeah, that, it, wow. it's it's got to be fun to see that stuff delivered to the winery too, yeah. right? When the truck rolls up, and <laughs> <laughs> this huge barrel on it. Too. Yeah. So this wine actually is probably 60 percent of the, the flex tank. With uh, you know the, the big egg shape that people have been using, you've probably seen. Those I've seen some of these, yeah. right? So yeah. that was developed in in the in the Rhone Valley, like nice. by the Chapoutier. But the flex tank people in Australia have stolen the shape, and so you get mm -hmm. that self stirring lees, the convection during uh, during uh, fermentation, and the flex tanks themselves are kind of these big polyethylene tanks that they're kind of the they're kind of like Patagonia. Kepling underwear for wine, right? They they they, they, they breathe they breathe a little bit, right? Yeah, so, of course, yeah. And so, putting it in the egg gives you the kind of the creamy mouth feel, and, but it's also like putting it in a neutral barrel like a neutral. as well, because you get the air transfer through right. the polyethylene. Yep. So it's not that super bright uh, stainless steel kind of fruit. It's got a more softer, soft, round, more palette, yeah. creamier. Yeah, there's, there's none of the edginess that I, I, get. Yeah. I, yeah. I would never feel like this had a, a steel influence in it at all, right? It, was, it doesn't have any of that on the nose or the palate. Um, but it does have, like, absolutely singing acidity right now. Um, yeah. The acid's in a really nice place. Uh, uh, and the sort of, like, buttery components that you get from, like, malolactic fermentation are really, like, dialed down. There's not a lot of that sort of flavor here. It's really the, the fruit shining through. It's, it's well integrated for being such a young wine, I think, too. Uh, it, it's definitely enjoyable. Is that hint of like lees or, or whatever on the nose um, because of the recent bottling, or is that something that? Well, I, I mean, it is a surly. It is a surly wine. Oh, everything, yeah. even the egg is is not ten months surly. So it right. does have that you know those yeasty components yes. um, as part of the part and parcel of the the wine. That's a stylistic choice. Okay. Um, and that egg with the you know with the convection, the self stirring, you get more of that kind of yeastiness. I think. Than okay. if you just put it in a regular vessel. This year we'll have, uh, well, two punch ons and more eggs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, because we got rid of the, we don't make the Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc anymore as we did last year, so it's simpler. Oh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Oh, and yeah. Tempranillo, right? So and Sorrel. And Sorrel. And Sorrel. And that's Viognier. exciting to and me. Viognier. So. And, and Viognier. And Viognier. Yeah, we need Viognier for the Sorrel. Oh, that, that's, that's the best thing you can do with Viognier. <laughs> Zing. <laughs> we're gonna move on. We're gonna move yep. on to wine number two. This is the 2013. Huh? Okay, yeah, we've got like yeah. a little mini vertical here, right? Yeah, it's pretty neat to see. Um, I know 13 was kind of a, a wild vintage. How was it for you guys? We harvested before the rain. Okay, great. Uh, as did many people. Uh, but uh, it, it was a difficult year in some ways. Uh, not not very warm, much <laughs> of the time, and then uh, when did we harvest? About the end of September. I, I've I've forgotten. Okay. But we beat the range anyway. Good. Yeah. And so it's it's a little lighter wine. It wasn't a hot summer. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and and definitely you know de definitely a lot of challenges. I think Chaz helped a lot of people around at harvest, and he can tell you stories yeah. about Wild, after man. the rain fruit, right? And yeah. The, Some and harvest the during the rain. Many people harvest the rain. Yeah. 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 Y
management was appropriate, there was a lot of spoilage. Smells awesome. Sure. Mm. Did you, uh, were you interested in the farming first or in the winemaking side first? What, what, uh... Well, probably the farming. But okay, yeah. Couldn't afford to buy a winemaker or hire one. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so you could have, you could have the boat. <laughs> this smells great. Mm. Wow. This yeah, likes this is to open right. up. It has a little bit more CO2 in solution than we'd like. After oh, it's been okay. open, it goes away. Sure. Okay. I I, 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 I'll even I'll even admit I kind of like that sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, I get that little little bit of lively flavor to come out of it. How long have these been open? Not long. Okay, like twenty okay, minutes, pop, thirty minutes. Pretty yeah. much popping for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pretty close. Yeah. This the the nose is so expressive uh -huh. yeah. right now. Great um, roses. Yeah. Yeah. The the floral component is very strong. Right. Like floral, sort of like dry tea, no. um, but then a lot of fruit also in there. Um, no. This is the three clones, which is mm -hmm. a blend of the Pomar, triple seven, and one one five. Okay. About one third each, within five percent or so. All right. Down, that's Eleven good. months in the barrels and flex tanks. All right. And and, and are do you have are, are do you have other clones besides those planted in your Pinot Noir vineyard? Is that the, the well? Bulk of your... Now we do yes. Okay. But not very much. We have uh, some six six seven, mm -hmm. which we'll use for another label, and then we have some. Just planted this year, clone 95, a new clone uh, we got from Dickie Roth. But that one produced for two more years, two or three years. Sure. Oh, that's that's be fun. To, it'd be fun to see how that comes up, though. That's that's good. And have you have you done the the three clone blend uh, through the entirety of your production? Or is that a new right? That's okay. that's the that's what I did from the beginning. I happen to have three grandchildren, so the three single clones use their names. Perfect. Uh, nice. What we do after tasting in August typically is select a few barrels, uh, rack them, put them back for an additional seven months, getting eight months, uh, 18 months total, and then everything else gets blended into the three clones. Oh, great. So the single clones get 18 months. Sure. Cool. So we can do a horizontal, as we say. Yeah. Uh, and also, we have been doing some verticals. We used to do three, four vintages. Right. But, uh, Those are always fun to taste side by side. Right? Well, right, and so right now in the tasting, we're doing a horizontal tasting where we, you know, the three clones are cuvee. And right. since we bottle each of the other single clones by themselves, you get to taste in one year the cuvee and then kind of deconstruct it into each of its individual parts. And so oh, you can cool. see yeah. what yeah. characteristics each of the clones has donated to the, yeah. to the blend. That, you know, the, the Mirabelle, the 115, kind of gives it the acid backbone and the Pomard gives it the you know, structure mm -hmm. and, and body. That would be a different tasting to do that. 777 yeah. kind of gives yeah. it the aromatics. And so it's a... It's an instructive tasting at the tasting room. Yeah, that's, that's a cool little horizontal. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. If you come there, we can do that. We can do the single clones. And yeah, and, and I think that like you're talking about the savory element in there. I, I think that really comes through on the nose as well. There's a good backbone, a little bit of, a little bit of oak on this as well, but, but not overwhelming at all. It's no, nice. this, this has probably 75% uh, of uh, this has been in flex tanks with staves. Mm, mm. And the reason I started with flex tanks five years ago is I didn't have the space in the wine in the wine cellar and yeah. with three flex yeah. with two flex tanks stacked five barrels each it takes about the same floor space as six barrels stacked okay and so i started trying it and uh, we've got the amount of the number of staves and the time pretty much <laughs> pinned so it does about the same thing and in blind right. tastings i've done many blind tastings with people who have very good palates and Occasionally, I've noticed a few people being irritated because they preferred the flex tank wine. Oh, sure. Wow. <laughs> okay. Sure, I, and I think you, yeah. I, don't, I think it's good to have your assumptions challenged, right? I mean, I think it's good to have those Absolutely. experiences blind. Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think this wine is tasting really good right now, too. The fruit does have a really nice burst of freshness to it. Um, like I said, I like a little bit of that, that CO2 in there, but, but the brighter fruit is really nice, mostly strawberries, a little bit of cherry. Yeah, good sense of acidity again. Real nice structure. Yeah, yeah. like nice tannin component, nice nice acid, um, big, big savoriness in the finish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, very delicious. Thirteen. <laughs> of all, out of all the technological things you have done or designed yourselves uh, in the winery, uh, what are you most excited about? Each of each each of you, what are you most excited about? So, guys with two science backgrounds, you know they're going to make some stuff for themselves. They're going to bring some of that knowledge to the winery. I'd love to hear what you're most excited about that you did? Well, I'm, I'm most excited about something we haven't done yet, and I'll see if that goes along with it. 
I hate the top off barrels. I, yeah, <laughs> I read about this a little I'm, bit in I'm the with you, sheet. I'm well, with you on that. there's a very good way to eliminate the problem, and I designed a, a little system, but we haven't implemented it, where you have a little argon uh, pressure on a yeah. on a barrel mm -hmm. uh, with some headspace, and have a little spigot on top. So when you want to have a taste from the barrel, you go turn the spigot. Uh, you do a couple of things. First of all, every time you pull a bung on a barrel, you give it oxygen. Of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I remember back when I had someone else working for me named Dave. He was always in there pulling <laughs> bungs. And I have a DO dissolved oxygen instrument. I could tell which ones he was in just by sticking my probe in there. Wow. Okay. So why do that? Right. It would be very nice to eliminate the labor and have a really nice way to taste the barrel. So we could have a little manifold, a string of... Uh, uh, little hoses running around the bell room, <laughs> right? <laughs> and a spigot on each one. Anyway, haven't done that. But. Sure, good. And, and what about what about you, Dave? What are, what are you, what are you, uh, <laughs> I didn't follow that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I'm gonna reinvent. Uh, let's see. I, I can't reinvent topping. Don just did that. How, what will I reinvent? Uh, uh, what, what what do we have in the glass now? No, we're getting to the 14. 14. Dave. 14 yeah, right. 14 three clouds. Hot year. So this is yeah, the first of the first of, yeah. the first of the three hot years. So that okay. thirteen that you just had was a little more traditional organ, more the kind of the kitchen spice nose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one, of course, hot, hot, yeah. hot, hot growing season, so much more fruit forward. Um, yeah, very much so. Um, the one one five that we have has this really uh, distinctive um, Bing cherry note to it that I think probably yeah, much just, darker but, fruit. Than yeah, the thirteen like carries through on on mm -hmm. this. Um, it's certainly the style that the spectator mm. likes okay. more, more yeah. than the 13. They give it a 94 and highly recommend it. Uh, fantastic. That's, that's good news. That's, yep. Yep. Yeah, that's the... good news for you guys. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, it was nice when they come out, when Harvey came out with this six wines, highly recommended. Only one was a U.S. wine, and that was this one. Congratulations. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. yeah that's fantastic. Yeah. And, it's, it, and this also smells mm. very good. The, the aromatics really jump right out of the glass at you. I can, I can definitely see how this makes an impression. Yeah. More fruity, a little mm -hmm. bit, a little, little mm -hmm. tea influence. Mm -hmm. um, whole stem or? No, we don't, no have, any, no we don't have any clusters. whole cluster. Oh, no. oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Pain in the ass. I'm, I'm getting whole cluster, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well. I think, I think yeah. so. Yeah. A little bit of that herbal character, I think. Yeah. Just a touch that would remind me of something that you can use partial whole cluster or something, but I was just wondering. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it smells still, good. Yeah. Still very alive like on the palate. Like uh, tastes a little more of a mix of those dark fruits and the, mm -hmm. the lighter strawberries mm -hmm. from before. A little bit of floral character. More in the direction mm. of a California wine. Mm. I, I could see that comparison. Sure, yeah. You've consumed uh, much more California wine, I think, than, uh, than either me or Chaz, Chaz have. I don't know so much about it. So one question I had is, what do you guys feel is the terroir, uh, the di differentiation for the Chehalem Mountains for terroir when it comes to Oregon? It's different. In your opinions. Uh, what I hear from David Adelsheim is that it's quite different from the Dundee Hills. Okay. Um, well, that I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, he thinks it's better, and uh, that's an personal opinion. Yeah, that's because we're both there. Yeah. It's like judging uh, art, right? So. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I like them both. Uh, I think we have more basalt. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all volcanic. Mm -hmm. And uh, very deep jory. This, this, the block for these wines is very, very deep jory soil. But mm -hmm. the other blocks are very different. Totally different soils. Well, I, mean, I think that's, I that. think that's, that's the defining characteristic account. of the Chalem Mountains is that it's a, it's a geological dog's breakfast, as we would say in New Zealand, right? But <laughs> sure. in, in a 10-minute walk, you can be from Jory to Nekia with you know, some Willikensian right. in between. And it's, hmm. It just happens this yeah. the, the first block planet is almost all solid Jory, very deep. Okay. A few rocks on one side, but then when you get on the other side, that draw where we have the Tempranillo, that's a different story. It's all rocky. Right. I guess, it's, I guess it kind of lends itself to natural divisions in the blocks then too, right? If, yeah. if you've got obvious, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, obvious mm. different soil types. That's, that's, that's this, is, this is really good for what you would consider a hot vintage wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. the fruit is, 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 is definitely in the forefront, right? Very strong component of it. But um, not in any way overdone. There's no, like, reductive quality. There's nothing that's, yeah, it's, it's just really fresh, very forward. 
um, but it has a good, good acidic, good acidic mm-hmm. backbone and tannin. Um, really, what all you ask for, like yeah. the oak supports yep. it really well. I really yep. love how that that blends with this ripeness of fruit, where it's it's just in the background, just supports mm-hmm. it a little bit, um, and a good sense of acidity. It's definitely lighter acidity than the previous wine. Sure. I think a fourteen to a thirteen. That's not going to surprise anyone anywhere in any bottle. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, but but it's it's still there and it keeps things a little lively. Um, and, and, and same thing, the tannins are definitely on the light side, but that's kind of to my preference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with a wine like this, perhaps, right? Yeah, so. uh, in a lot of cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, looking at your press sheet, yeah, we're, we're going to move on to, I think, the Tempranillo for the next wine. Um, yeah. And seeing that you guys had planted Syrah and Tempranillo, uh, why those varietals? And uh, what do you think the future for those wines are in the Willamette Valley? Um, I, I think Syrah I, has a place. Probably here. getting better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's your opinion on that? Like, well, I, we've I'm had no trouble getting it right. Um, yeah. The Syrah was planted in 2010, a very rocky, south facing slope. We don't till it, try to pick hmm. the surface rocks off. If you tried to till it, you, it wouldn't Break work. Your machinery. Uh, <laughs> it took a while to get, get it in the ground. I had to replant. Two, three times in some areas, but wow, uh, wow. but we have had no trouble getting it right. The first uh, Syrah was the 2014. Mm-hmm. First Tempranillo was the 2015. Yeah, right. Okay, okay. I look forward to trying these. For the, and those ones, yeah. why? Well, uh, not everyone is a Pinot Noir freak. I mean, I've had people come in; they're kind of Pinoted out, and when they <laughs> their eyes light up and they say, "Oh, you got something else." Yeah. And, and they'll buy some Syrah or Tempranillo, and then they'll still buy Pinot. And it's fun to make <laughs> something else too. Right. Agreed. I mean, yeah. And the the Syrah we make in a Kurt Roti style, you know, three to five percent co ferment of the Viognier that we've got in the in the vineyard. And so that's a, it's a fun wine to make. It's a fun wine to punch down. It you know it starts out smelling like flowers, and then oh. two days later it starts smelling like you know Hickory Farm smoked meat. It's got this really incredibly smoky, savory thing. So it's completely different. If you've you know, done nothing but Pinot Noir, it's a whole new animal that you know keeps you interested. Okay, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's get it in the glass. Yeah, yeah. What, so what, now this is Tempranillo. This yeah. one, you know, the, I was just describing this raw. How's the, the, how, but the, how's the farming is different for these grapes as opposed to uh, the Pinot Noir and the Chardonnay? I don't do anything different. <laughs> okay. uh, we, we a couple of times have uh, sprayed a little bit differently because you know we we uh, apply uh, uh, fertilizer foliar by spray. By uh, when we do the uh, tissue testing and leaf testing, sometimes mm-hmm. you'll find one micro component down, so we adjust it. But okay, really don't do much, anything different. Even in I, I mean, you know, I'm not a UC Davis winemaker, so I'm I'm pretty simple farm boy. I made the I've been making Tempranillo since 2009 from fruit I bought, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and some Syrah then, and I just made the same way. In fact, when I started, I took I took a little must from the Pinot and dumped it in to get the Oh, yeah. Get that thing going the first yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, get, to get, get these cooking, right? That's, yeah, that's, that's right. good. Everything we do is indigenous, by the way. No, we don't okay. Oh, I, I, that's no cool. So cult, just cultivated Wild from, ferments, yeah. yeah. Right from the juice you bring in. Yeah, that's great. And do you feel like you get, uh, or do you still use starters from Pinot for everything? Or do you do you use starters made out of the out of the same ones, or it's, it, all, it all washes out? Well, in the end anything. Anything. There's kind of a house yeast now. There we go. I mean, there, yeah. you know, it's, okay. uh, yeah. There's Darwinian selection going yeah. on. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. You want the strong ones to survive. And that, and that, you know, <laughs> after, the, after the third or fourth harvest, I suspect that there's, yeah. a, there's a winner that's inoculated into the building that, sure. you know, becomes your... I, I was warned about the problems that would be dangerous, yeah. and I was a little afraid. The first couple of years I, I took, to get it started, I, I took samples from a few of the fermenters and made a little sauna and got them going sure. faster and then put them back in there. Yeah, it's but pretty common. But after a year or so, yeah. no they, need they to. They fine. No right. need to. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. But, you know, I, I sent in some samples early on a couple of times, and I was frightened because of all the stuff they found in it. <laughs> and then the ETS... Uh, uh, I forgot his name. The microbiologist said, don't, don't worry about it. When the alcohol gets up to some point, it kills all those bad guys. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's right. That's, that's what yeah. the yeast is doing. They're sterilizing the field so they can, they can you know, work by themselves. That's the... Yeah, so, and, and that's, I mean, really why wine was successful right. thousands of years right. ago, exactly. right? Because it cleared right. out all the, bad, all the bad stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've noticed this about other red wines that I've tasted from the Willamette Valley where they're like Syrah, and red wines meaning uh, bolder varieties, mm-hmm. uh, Tempranillo, uh, Syrah, that they're they're like prettier when mm. they're from the Willamette Valley. Um, being from Southern Oregon, I get to taste a fair amount of Tempranillo, mm-hmm. Malbec, Syrah from Southern Oregon. 
that doesn't have any of these like sort of um, easiest the easiest way to describe it is Pinot Noir like mm. qualities well, is it like just the climate. Cool yeah, climate. yeah, very cool climate compared to Southern Oregon, um, especially like in and around the Umpqua Valley. We don't have the coastal influence at all. Um, we don't have like a mountain range anywhere near us, uh, so it's it's uh, it's hot. Probably get much thicker skins, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the this is this is in line the, the flavor profile and, the, and definitely the tannins, the acid, and the, just like the, the the sort of power it has reminds me of other Syrah I've had from here in the Willamette Valley. Meaning, yeah. So, and I think the uh, what what sets it out as Tempranillos. I think you get like a really nice savory element on the nose. Uh, you get kind of like some dark cherries and, and floral elements that I don't think you always get on Tempranillo. But I think there's a real mm. uh, almost like uh, like like roast beefy meaty mm. savory quality yep. on the nose there that uh, makes it stand out you know as a as a bigger red green boy the tannins while not powerful and super just, and and super heavy definitely stick with you on the palate and as I'm talking I can feel them still slowly drying some of that dark red fruit persists across the palate as well and, there, and this is a this is a very full bodied wine mm -hmm. without being like over like a lot of alcohol or a lot like a lot of intensity. Um, I just I like the dark the dark fruit profile is really really nice and yeah it's just got that sort of the way the tannins and the acid pair with the fruit mm. it's just it's it's pretty it's like lean compared to um, that's a not not a proper oh, descriptor mm -hmm. it's just a lighter character than right. what I'm used to in Tempranillo and I like that a lot so we have two blocks two different clones and they're very very different particularly today in measuring the bricks and the pH the first block is clone one. On 4453 Ridstock, we got that from Earl Jones. He's the Tempranillo king. Yeah. And then the other Abbas is Abbas 770 yeah. on 10114, and I got it through the nursery. But they're very, very different. This year, we're, we're finding the bricks today was what, 21.5? Yeah. yeah. It's ahead of the Pinot Noir. Wow. Whoa. Yeah, that, that's But it always says high pH. Okay. And that's Not good, really again, right? Thing. I mean, yeah. I think High that's responsible pH. for some of that yeah. lightness. So that oh, yeah. Why, why the name Explorer? Oh, Explorer, uh, well, the, the, the first U.S. satellite was Explorer 1 in January in 58. Sputnik was November in 57. But anyway, I, was, I did some experiments in NASA in the late 60s. I had experiments on Explorers 30, 39, and 40, measuring galactic and cosmic radiation in the two to six MeV per nucleon range of this little device. I want comments. If any of you know what that means, put it yeah, in. That, yeah, that, exactly. I bet, I bet we'll get one or two. That's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, so that's a part of our, so we've, we've gotten Don to admit that he has a, a, a past. And so yeah. he started a space exploration series label, at which Explorer is one, but right. the Apollo Chardonnay is another, and, and our Saturn Syrah. Um, you worked work on some of the Apollo missions, right? You, yeah. you need a booster to put Apollo in orbit, so that's a Saturn Syrah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Wow. wow. That, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's incredible. And so then, then your research was based around shielding and protecting the components from the ra radiation, that's mostly? Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever drink wine with any of the people in NASA? Yeah, what did he like? Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, my best friend is an ex-astronaut. He comes up here quite a lot, but... Uh, came out for the eclipse? Oh, few yeah, of them. Yeah, you, you get to see the eclipse. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. All right, <laughs> yeah. that was uh, that was pretty remarkable. But thing. he had to work. He didn't see total darkness, total eclipse. Yeah. It, we were at ninety nine percent or something. Right. But I went down by Salem. Fantastic. Uh, down where he was. Yeah, who who is the astronaut that comes up? Oh, Holm, uh, Don Holmquist is. All right. <laughs> most most of these guys that in my pretty remarkable story, around anymore. Honestly, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that, that's that's I, yeah. these these are yeah. these are kind of rare stories, and in some ways it'd be it'd be fun to sit and talk about, yeah, talk about the space program for. Another it would hour be fun to, yeah. to have dinner and sit around. And but there are people who are qualified, that, yeah, much more qualified to do that than we are. We're here to exactly. talk about the wines. Exactly. Thank you for sharing these. Thank yes. you for telling our story, and I hope what this does really is encourage those of you watching. So if you're ever out in the valley, if you're ever out by Newburgh, pop into their tasting room, say hello, have a conversation about science as deep as you possibly care to, because it's there. <laughs> have a talk about some, yeah. some, some fine moments of American science history, have a talk about 
what minds like these think about when planting farming, planting and farming vineyards and making wine in the Willamette Valley. Thanks so much for taking the time. To We're happy to geek out. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Yeah.